welcome. It's that time once again. The Patriot Radio News Hour live from the hole in the ceiling studios in absolutely drop dead gorgeous Deer Valley, Arizona. I hope this day finds you well because we're like a mash unit in here. Arlene came in this morning and she's like, oh, she, she has this shoulder thing. And she needs to get a shot in there. And she's like, God, I can barely sleep. And I started laughing. I said, I don't even know what happened. I, I, I can't even say, like, I, you know, bent down or, or I turned the wrong way. Apparently, I just slept the wrong way. Yeah, that's what happens when you get older. You now can sleep the wrong way. My back's killing me. Then Cliff, Eric's guy Cliff, the car guy Cliff, he just came into the office. He, he grabs the Advil. And I'm just, we were all commiserating. That's what happens when you get old, right? Things start breaking down. Speaking of breaking down, the Dow, it's breaking bad in the wrong way, down over 300 points. Uh, really chaotic, another chaotic session yesterday. Uh, the markets are all over the place. Listen, I'm going to tell you where the key is and where the key isn't. But before I do that, our toll-free number, 800-951-0592, wealth insurance. You better get some. You know, here's the funny thing. I know this. You're going to get some. The question is, when? I highly recommend now before it gets a whole lot more expensive to do it later. And you just simply call the number gold and silver. It is what we do. The website, listen, we, we keep you comfortably disturbed everywhere at allamericangold.com uh, all the articles the videos uh, all the all the uh, I don't even know what to call them anymore the Facebooks the Twitters the social media that's the word I was looking for all the social media stuff it's all out there the metals program right you uh, you check that out another great way to get involved because I know a lot of you are like hey you know what I want to get involved I want to be a part I get it I see what's happening problem is I don't have, you know, thousands of dollars. Look into the metals program. You can get involved for as little as $100 a month. Yeah. We, when we ship you four times a year, it, it's a great way to get involved. Uh, go out to allamericangold.com, and you can uh, read all about it there. A lot of things happening today, but pro the bigger news is what happened yesterday. So as we know, uh, we've got a debt problem. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it depended on who you talk to and when you talk to them. It depends on whether or not they think we have a problem. Uh, cue the Republicans now. Uh, you know, you go back to, to like 2011 uh, when they, they shut down the government in 2011 because they wanted all these mandatory spending caps and spending's out of control and all this stuff. And now they're now that they're in charge, apparently that's not an issue anymore. Oh, God, I don't want to sound – well, I guess – I'm not liberal either, because the Democrats, they love it, too. Who doesn't like spending money? We all want to spend the money. Listen, that, spending money is like an American tradition. It's more of a tradition than Christmas or Thanksgiving, Easter, any of those holidays. We love to spend money. Well, we, we've got a, you know, a spending problem. And we have, every day, we have to sell debt. Right? This, is, this is how we function. Uh, today... Uh, is the the shutdown day, and, and I, it looks like they're going to, to get uh, uh, something passed, and we'll talk about that. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. The bill got bigger overnight, just like everything else. They keep adding on to it. Uh, but, but we have to sell this debt every day. Yesterday, we had to sell 10-year notes. The day before, we were selling three-year notes. They're not doing so good. And, and what I mean by that is the the amount of debt that needs to be sold, right, isn't meeting with the amount of buyers that actually want to buy it. Uh, so what happens is you have rates spiking and, and all of these things. The 10-year the note uh, is back at the very top. Right now it's at 286, 287, got as high as 288. Uh, today, this morning, that's why the Dow's down 350 points now, uh, and, and it's just this vicious, vicious circle. Uh, but we'll break down uh, what actually happened in the auction yesterday, because that's kind of what really set the tone, because yesterday it looked like the Dow was going to close up, you know, a couple hundred points. 
and then right at the close it came crashing down and actually closed uh, lower, not a lot lower, uh, but today we're kind of fixing that problem. But here's, here's what, what happened yesterday at the 10-year note auction. Uh, the, the details of it came out that the 10-year note, which spiked on Friday, right? So Friday's sell-off, that 666-point sell-off, that, that 10-year note had gotten you know, up to 285, 286. Then we had the sell-off on Monday, the 1,200-pointer. Uh, the ten-year note came crashing down, and not not because of of, of uh, any good reason, just because people were flying to safety, right? They wanted to get it, get out of stocks and get into bonds, right? Because they're they think that's the the old mentality of safety and all of that stuff. Uh, but the ten-year note got all the way down to two six nine, and in a matter of a couple of days, now it's right back, right, right, two eight. We're right back to to the 288, but here is why. Yesterday's 10-year auction started, the auction started at about 272 on the 10-year. They couldn't find any buyers. No one wanted it. And so they had to start increasing the, well, about 273. Anybody? Bueller? Hello? No? 274? How about 275? No? 276? 277? 278? 279? 28? 281? Right, you see what I'm getting at? That's what happened in the debt markets last night. And guess what? The dealers had to eat a whole lot of it. We'll talk about that and so much more when we get back. 800-951-0592. Uh, quick look in here. Uh, like Dow's down uh, 340 points right now. Gold's up four. Uh, silver's up ten. Uh, again, yesterday I told you, you know, just do what I say. It'll be so much easier, right? But especially when I tell you, you know, the 80 ounces of silver to gold, you always got to put some away. Uh, crude oil falling again. Uh, not a good sign. Uh, because that was such a big part of GDP growth. Uh, but we surpassed Saudi Arabia uh, and as far as crude oil production on a daily basis and uh, record production since the 70s, and now all of a sudden we got too much of it again. Uh, anyway, getting back to what's happening. So here's this 10-year note auction, and the dealers are, are selling it. Nobody's buying it. They get to the highest rate in over four years. So we got to go all the way back to January of 2014 uh, to find this much interest having to be paid to auction off notes. And remember, the size of these issuances are only getting bigger. Right, so so next week it's going to be a little bigger, and then about a little bigger, and a little bigger. And if Congress does what I think they're going to do today, they're going to get even bigger. But what really was bad wasn't just how much of the you know how much they spiked, but even after the spike, the internals of it. So when you looked in, how excited were they really? The bid to cover ratio, in other words. How many people were in there uh, looking to buy? Uh, down to 2.34. So when they finally got to the level that people were saying, hey, I'll buy it, uh, 2.34 bid to cover. A normal bid to cover is about 2.7, you know, somewhere between 2.6 and 2.8. And, and I know that for a lot of you, hey, I don't understand what that means. It doesn't really, you don't really have to understand it. To know that, just know this, when the bid-to-cover ratio falls, okay, that means people aren't that interested. When the bid-to-cover ratios rise, that means, hey, we're really interested, right? We, there's, we got all kinds of buyers, and there's not that many sellers, right? <laughs> right? Kind of think about it like supply and demand. So the bid-to-cover ratio, that's demand. And in the internals, demand was the worst in years. 
Then you look at what they call the the foreign buyers, okay? Because that's the you know, and there's all these games that they play, and then people buy it through like some obscure Antigua or or some other island in the Caribbean, but foreign buyers. And now foreign buyers, they need to buy most of it. That's just how it works, right? But over 70, somewhere between 70 and 75 percent, foreign buyers was down to 67 percent. So look at it this way. We went from uh, three out of every four to one out of every three, or two out of every three, I'm sorry, from three out of four. That's a huge drop, right? Treasury markets aren't supposed to act that way. A direct sale also fell, and they fell to 5%, and the dealers, okay, so the guys that sell the debt, right? Part of the deal is, is, uh, you know, they buy... You know, normally about 20% of the, because they have their own customers. So let's just say, and I don't know the all the dealers, I probably should, but let's just say whether it's uh, J.P. Morgan or Merrill Lynch, right? They've got their customers that need, uh, you know, 10-year notes. They normally buy about 20% of it. They were forced to buy almost 30% of it yesterday. See, because that's part of the deal. Hey, since you're here, when the when the auction ends, because the auction has an end date, a time date, right? Okay, the auction ends at two o'clock. So at two o'clock, whatever's left, dealer, you get. Uh, and that's what we had yesterday, and this is what got everybody concerned, because now here's what's happened overnight. So yesterday we talked about how they were trying to reach a budget deal, right? Because the government's supposed to shut down today if we don't have a spending deal, and and what they've been doing, as we know, is they've been raising the, the, the day by weeks, right? Hey, we'll give you a, here's a three week spending bill or a four week spending bill, but now they're gonna hammer out a two year deal. So we learned yesterday, they came up with this great idea. They said, hey, I know, let's just spend even more money. And Republicans and Democrats came together and they said, how about $300 billion, right? That was how much more they were going to spend. Well, guess what? This morning, the number got moved. Instead of $300 billion, they agreed to spend $400 billion. Uh, And here's how it breaks down, right? So... Uh, still the same deal, you know, $80 billion for defense, $63 billion for other stuff, of which, by the way, $20 billion of that is infrastructure, so not what the president wanted. Remember, the, tr- the president wanted to increase infrastructure spending from $60 billion a year to $140 billion a year. Well, they're giving them 20 at least for right now. Right, It's still a moving target. But then they added another uh, $6 billion to fight opiate epi- epidemic, right? That's your heroin, right? <laughs> and you know what's funny is somebody needs to come up with a way for the government to fight its addiction to this death. $6 billion for heroin. $4 billion for rebuilding veterans' hospitals. That's kind of sad, isn't it? That's it? That's just me anyway, right? $4 billion for college affordability programs. Are you kidding me? Everybody that has, and of course i got a kid, he's going to college. He's a senior in high school. $4 billion for college affordability. Are you kidding me? They're fifty grand a year. And I say, I'm not kidding. Right, at ASU, you go, you send your kid to ASU, and you're in state. You're still paying twenty, twenty-five grand. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The college affordability program is aimed at helping police officers, police officers, teachers, and firefighters. How does that get in there? Ninety billion, and this is where the the rest of it came in. Ninety billion more in disaster relief. So I knew that 
I guess we knew that was going to be in there somewhere. That was not part of the 300. So think about what what happened overnight. We had a terrible 10-year note auction. By the way, the day before, the three-year note auction was very similar to the 10-year note auction. Now Congress wants to say, hey, we want to add $150 billion of spending in 2018. Okay, so that, and no offsets. Not one single dollar. They're not cutting anything anywhere. $150 billion there. $90 billion for disaster relief. Okay, that's $240 billion. We did the tax cut. Let's use the government number because I don't know what it's going to be, but the the the, the tax cut is supposed to cost us $140 billion a year. Okay, That's $380 billion now of additional spending. The increase in the the debt markets, the interest rate hikes, right? The two eight eight adds another hundred billion dollars in deficit, right? So the rising rate causes us to have <laughs> have to pay more in debt. That brings the total to four hundred and eighty billion dollars. We 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 ran a six hundred and sixty six billion dollar deficit last year. So just the back of the napkin puts us at $1.146 trillion. That doesn't include, you know, there's going to be more. <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, maybe we'll get lucky and there won't be a hurricane or some storm or this or that or some other reason to spend a bunch of money. That doesn't include how much more Social Security and Medicare costs, you know, because that grows every year. It doesn't include anything else. So you think about a, a government that we've got to add another $500 billion, rounding up a little bit, $500 billion more of debt to be sold. So then you factor in all the student loan debt, all, the, all that other debt, the stuff that they don't tell you about, that they don't like to count. We probably are going to have to sell about $1.7 trillion worth of debt on top of about eight trillion, it's somewhere between seven and ten trillion of the twenty trillion we owe that rolls over. So now you're let's just call it eight trillion. So now you're talking about we got to sell about ten trillion dollars worth of debt. Oh wait, but then the Federal Reserve they're trying to reduce their balance sheet, so they're not going to be buying about $400 billion worth of debt that they had already bought. They're not going to roll it over. They're just going to, that's going to be over with. So somebody else has to buy it. And you can start to see why it is rates are doing what they're doing. Uh, as the 10-year note now, the highest level, at least the 10-year the note auction, the highest level we've seen in over four years, it's got everybody nervous again. It's got the Dow down, uh, back down to where pretty close. We're closing into where we were Monday uh, as far as, you know, after the 1,200-point loss on Monday. The Dow got about half of that back on Tuesday. I actually thought yesterday that we were going to get another, you know, half of the half back because I thought we'd be up about another 300 points yesterday. We didn't get it, right? The Dow actually finished down about 20 points. Uh, and now today, uh, last I just checked in, with the, when I le- just last saw it, we're down almost 400 points today. Uh, and I don't know how this ends. And nobody wants to talk about it. I'm listening to Mitch McConnell and, and Chucky Schumer, and, and nobody seems to care. They just want to spend the money. They don't care how it has to be paid for. And ultimately, at the end of the day, remember whose money they're spending. It's not like they're spending their own money. Right? It's not like Mitch McConnell's writing a check and Chuck Schumer's writing a check. That's our money. I don't know if I, listen, I guess we'll, we'll hope for the best. I mean, that's kind of what we have now, right? This is this is why you need to put some away. Listen, we hope for the best. Right? I want Wall Street to go higher. I just don't know that it can. I mean, it went up 40%. Right? That, we know that's not normal. Right? It's, it's got to come back. 
Right now we've got interest rates spiking. Listen, they manipulated the price of debt for a decade. What do you really think is going to happen? Right, it's going to be all, all uh, you know, candies and nuts, and it's going to be great, and, and we can just, you know, hey, we just want to start reducing the, the balance sheet, and, and we're going to go a couple of trillion dollars a year into debt. It's going to be fine. Right? What, could, what could possibly go wrong? But that's why you call us. you got to put some of it away. Just keep buying. A little bit here, a little bit there, and it adds up. Uh, when we come back, Goldman Sachs overnight. Goldman Sachs, who is, they hate gold. They can't stand gold. They tell you it's going to go down every single year. Came out today or last night in a note to their clients. Hey, we're wrong. We're changing our gold forecast, and they're changing it in a big way. We're going to share with you just how much better Goldman Sachs sees the gold market in 2018 and 2019 than they did just a few short months ago. This is how quickly things change. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, the conservative pro-family broadcast of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a leading voice for the sanctity of life, traditional education, the Constitution, and American sovereignty. Now, from the Phyllis Schlafly Center Studios, here's Ryan Haidt. On December 21st, as President Trump prepared to leave Washington for Christmas, the White House released a list of 81 major accomplishments during the president's first year in office. A second list touted more than 100 other minor achievements in 2017. His fulfillment of the campaign promise to roll back globalism is one of the crowning achievements of Trump's first year. Without exception, President Trump stood up against the incessant pressure by other countries against the United States. An example of this occurred later the same day at the United Nations in New York. The U.N. General Assembly held an emergency session to condemn Trump's decision to move the American embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, a decision that will surely come back to haunt the dysfunctional body. Some 128 U.N. member countries joined in the vote against this sovereign decision by the United States, while 35 countries abstained and 21 were absent. Only nine countries, including the United States and Israel, voted against the resolution. Before the vote, President Trump spoke at a White House cabinet meeting about the vote scheduled for the next day. They take hundreds of millions of dollars and even billions of dollars, and then they vote against us, he said. Well, we'll be watching those votes. Let them vote against us. We'll save a lot. We don't care. Well, three weeks earlier, the Trump administration had properly withdrawn from the U.N. Global Compact for Migration, which claims to be aimed at protecting the rights of refugees and migrants. Its real purpose is to give refugees and migrants the right to resettle in the countries of their choice. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson explained, We simply cannot in good faith support a process that could undermine the sovereign right of the United States to enforce our immigration laws and secure our borders. He stressed that it is the primary responsibility of sovereign states to help ensure that migration is safe, orderly, and legal. As 2017 came to a close, so, it seems, does the century-long push for globalism. Join us tomorrow as we cover yet another important name in this pushback against the United Nations. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. It's no secret that globalists are bent on destroying Western culture. Whether the threat comes from inside or outside our borders, America must be protected from cultural Marxism and those who would deny American sovereignty. We're seeking your insight at phyllisschlafly.com. That's phyllisschlafly.com. And join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Still early, but Dow's Dow down 440 points. The S&P's down 37. The Nasdaq's down 111. Crude oil, uh, as we keep watching now, $60.94. Uh, Boy, if it breaks below 60, it uh, could be some more damage as well there. Uh, in a note this morning, I thought it was last night, they said it was Thursday, so I was still asleep when they released their note. The global investment bank, Goldman Sachs, said, you know what, we were wrong. 
They didn't actually apologize for it. Well, you know, we were wrong. They are now revising their their gold price forecast. It was nice of them, right? They're real nice of them. They now say uh, by the end of the first quarter, the gold price will average thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. By the end of the second quarter, the price of gold will average $1,375. And oh, by the way, uh, by this time next year, 1450 Just to tell you how big of a move it was, their previous forecast, uh, 1225 by June... They told their clients gold was going to be twelve hundred dollars. They missed it. They missed it just by a little bit. Uh, and then next year is only going to be twelve hundred twenty-five again. Uh, so Goldman Sachs now saying, "Listen, gold's going up another twenty percent," and I think that's low. But here's what they had to say: the normal, and they had normal in quotation. The normal relationship would say that gold has to go lower as real interest rates rise, right? And that used to be the old way. Of course, I've been telling you uh, for the last couple of years, that's not it anymore. Now we're going to have rising rates rising gold in a falling dollar and the answer is really simple they mispriced it they mispriced all of that debt for 10 years so it, of course it's not going to be normal since a and here's their logic right since a non-yielding asset there is less reason to hold gold right gold doesn't pay interest right that old argument right that old chestnut Remember when they used to use that as the reason why you shouldn't own gold? Oh, it doesn't pay interest, right? And then all the bond yields went negative. Uh, apparently, according to Goldman Sachs now, yeah, nobody nobody cares about that anymore. Yeah, no one, And really what they're saying is no one's buying that. Right? We, that was what we used to tell people, and they went along with it. Now they're not. The growth of holdings in emerging markets has their their gold demand leading to an upper level shift in the equilibrium gold price. In other words, hey, all of these countries that that we are like, hey, it's you know, we're, we're going to pay you interest. Why hold gold? Or say now nah, we want the gold. Thanks, but no thanks. Kind of remember, think back to why we closed the gold window in 1971, right? And we're going off the gold standard, and we're closing the gold window, and it's going to be great as long as Americans buy American and Richard Nixon came out on TV. The real reason was because none of the governments that, that had debt wanted to buy anymore. They're like, eh, I know I could buy some of your bonds, but Here's the $35. I want my gold back. But we're paying you interest. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'll take the 30 I'll, I'll, I'll just take the gold back. Here's you said gold's $35. Here's $35. Give me my gold back. And we we went from 20,000 metric tons down to 8. And by the way, the the at the pace that it was going, we were going to be out of gold by like 1973. So they had to shut it down. Well, we kind of got the same thing going today. The Chinese, they're supposed to be at the auction. They're supposed to be buying the 10-year note. You know what they're saying? Yeah, we'll buy some. You know, we we don't want to, you know, we got this global economy. We want to keep it together for a while. We're not quite ready yet. But, yeah, I'm not buying the extra stuff. I'm going to buy some gold. Yeah. According to Goldman Sachs, they're going to buy gold at... 1300 they're going to buy gold at 1350 at 1375 at 1450 and they're going to keep on buying it stronger emerging market growth has been a key driver in other words that's another way of saying the countries that are supposed to be buying the US debt are instead buying gold 
We now see upward pressure on gold from stronger FX demand in a weaker U.S. dollar, higher inflation break-evens, which have been offsetting much of the the recent uh, increase in interest rates, and hedging demand. By the way, the gold ETF, because that's what these guys, you know, they like their paper gold. 27 metric ton increase uh, in the gold ETFs. Yeah, don't pay attention. And I know they, they keep talking about Wall Street, Wall Street, Wall Street, but you got to follow the money. Goldman's comments come after gold slid down, right? Gold was all the way got down to $1,310. Of course, that was that was more some some squaring, some profit taking. Uh, the the gold, Goldman Sachs, by the way, said they see gold demand up six percent in 2018. Uh, so uh, that was Goldman Sachs in a note out to their clients this morning, and I think it's something really we got to pay attention to because this isn't how it's supposed to work, right? How it's supposed to work was, hey, listen. We'll buy all your crap from you. All right, we changed all the laws. We allowed all these U.S. companies to become international companies, build all these factories over in your country, and ship it all back here. But in exchange, you need to buy our debt. That's the agreement. That's the unwritten rule. And now, at least according to Goldman Sachs, apparently there's been a change in the plan. Again, very similar the, uh, to why we closed the gold window in the 70s. And again, think about what we had. Okay, so we had the 1929 crash, right, and we had what was deflation. Right, remember the, the, the bankers said, wait, we want to grow, and we, wanna, we just want to print money. The United States as a nation up until that point didn't run deficit. And the national debt was nothing. We'll talk about what happened then, what happened after they closed the gold window, and what we're looking at when we get back. Patriot Radio News Hour. Gold's up six right now, thirteen, eighteen, and and uh I a matter of fact I was telling uh one of the guys that's going to be uh, one of our new partners in Colorado, jo- uh, Jason. I was talking to him last night, and I told him last night, "Hey, the bottom's in in gold." I told you yesterday, bottom's in in silver. Uh, matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to do you a, a, a solid here. I've got I don't know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's call it fifteen rolls of silver. That I'll still do at 380 a roll. I've got 20, 30, probably 30 rolls of quarters that I'll still do at the 125. So you silver guys hunting for the bottom, I'm going to give you the the this is the easy one, right? The layup. Uh, U.S. Silver Eagle rolls 380. Uh, I've only got 15 of them, and then uh, quarter rolls. I got 30 quarter rolls at 125. And then on on the gold side, U.S. ten dollar liberties. These are the half ounces. The U.S. ten dollar liberties. Uh, I'll do those at six seventy five. So you're gonna save ten bucks there as well. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Goldman Sachs just laying it out. I mean, really, they just finally. It took them a while, but they figured it out. Hey, guess what? The rest of the world, they don't, they, they've got enough debt. And rates are going to rise, and gold's going to rise with it, versus the historical norm where higher rates used to mean, what? Lower gold prices. Now we've got the exact opposite. And then you start thinking about history. Because, you know, they always say history repeats itself. Yes, and it does. But there's always variables, right? 
So in the, the crash of, the, of the, the depression of the 30s, they called that a deflationary event, right? What they didn't like was that they couldn't increase the money supply without going into the ground and getting more gold. Right, and it also really was a great way to what make sure the government kept their spending in line. You know, the only time we really ran deficit during the uh, the first what hundred and you know fifty years of this country was war. The only time there was inflation, war, and as soon as the war ended, it went away. And, and, of course, we created the Federal Reserve in 1913, and we, we'll, I won't go into the history. That'll be a different show at a different time. And within 20 years, they broke it. And they closed all the banks, and they took away the gold from the citizenry, and we had deflation. Right? And they, they said if we could have just spent more and lowered rates and all that stuff. And then the, we had another problem. After World War II ended, and as things were going, the countries of the world were like, ah, you know what, we want that gold. Here's your $35, give us the gold. And we were going to be out of gold. We are going to run out of it. So we said, okay, you know what, that's it. Let's close the gold window. And, of course, we all remember the hyperinflation of the 70s. Right, and then they came out, and again, they didn't cause it, of course not. And then they had to raise the interest rates to, you know, some, you know, 20%. And then we had, you know, all the, you know, the Reagan tax cuts, which they misrepresent, and all that other stuff going on. But what we have going today is something even different yet. Right, we have the world out with rates rising and the dollar falling. I'll give you an example. The dollar rose on Tuesday P. Right? When the Dow the Dow came back, you know, at almost six hundred points and the ten year note went all the way down to the two six nine. Right now the dollar falling again because the the rates are rising. So we've got this other thing in effect now. Which I always like to tell you and I've been telling you for the last few years, it's a stagflationary event. Right, where rates are rising, causing all the debt that's already in existence to cost more. Right, all those people, and you know it. Right, you're out there and you're looking at your credit card bills, your monthly payments continue to rise. Right, if you got to go buy a new car, a new house, the 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 payments are rising. All of those things. Same thing with the government now. Right, we got to roll over all this debt. Hey, well, I'm not going to do it for that. You're going to have to pay me a little more. You're going to have to pay me a little more and a little more and a little more. And, and, and at the same time, the dollar's falling because, let's face it, what does all that debt mean? That means we've got all these dollars out there. Right? There's dollars everywhere. And the rest of the world's going, eh, you know, I'll take some. You know, I'll take a little bit, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take some of what we got here. And I'm, I'm going to buy gold. Yeah, I'm going to start buying gold. And Goldman Sachs had to come out today and say, you know what, everyone's buying it. And when, I, when they mean by it, they're talking about government, right? They're all doing the same thing. And, and, and this is the new cycle that we're in, where we've got higher rates, right, hurting growth. At the same time, we've got higher deficits trying to, to what? Trying to get the growth going. And, and now you have, and then you have the, the the central bank at the same time trying to what, trying to get unload on its balance sheet, which means now there's even more debt out there, which means now the rate's got to go even higher to pay for it, which means it's going to hurt growth even more, which means we got to spend even more money to get the growth that we lost because of a higher rate to keep going. I love it a lot. <laughs> and it's that cycle. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. I'll give you a little teaser for tomorrow's show. You know what's so funny? 
When you turn on the idiot box, you read the newspaper, you don't hear a word about it. Stock buybacks. Told you this was going to happen. Companies have announced $88.6 billion of stock buybacks since January the 1st. Really? I hadn't heard a word about it. Uh, by the way, that is the second largest amount ever. The other one, 09, remember? Right, when all the buyback stuff happened then. The last time we gave all the money to Wall Street, happened in again. We'll break that down for you tomorrow. So, so tomorrow we'll be talking about what nobody uh, apparently wants to say, which is, you know, they want to talk about how you got a thousand dollars, eighty. Call it eighty nine billion dollars, the second largest total ever in stock buybacks since January the first. Uh, the Dow. Listen, I don't know where the Dow is going to end up. Down, up. I mean, it's down 350 right now. Uh, it's been as down as much as 460. Uh, I don't know, right? And, and what I what I do know is the volatility is back. You know, go back and and we haven't had it for a while. But go back, you know, to 06, 07, 08, 09, 2010. Right? Remember, it, we had volatility all the time. The Dow was moving hundreds of points in either direction daily and it's back again right the risk that was the debt market and is the debt market right all of the risk is now coming back and here's the thing normally right just think about it normally normally when you have a period of high volatility then you get that real low volatility we had low volatility record low volatilities for a record amount of time. What do you think that means? Like the rubber band, right? It's going to snap back, and my guess is we're going to have unprecedented volatility. That's just, you know, just thinking about the elasticity of things and the markets and how they work, and they and that's usually what we can expect. Uh, and gold always does well in those times. And think about it, you know, gold, for Goldman Sachs to come out and say, hey, you know what, they didn't raise their gold forecast, you know, 5%. You know, 10%. So they raised it over 20%. Right? And they then that's just in 12 months. Right? They didn't tell you, you know, here's what's funny. Is I know what they were forecasting in 19 and 2020. I can't wait to, for them to update those cuz it would be uh, my guess will be there's probably we're probably going to see 30, 40, 50% increases in their projected price uh before the year is out. US Silver Eagles I'm going to give you the rock bottom price of yesterday at $380 a roll. Rolls of silver quarters at $125. And then U.S. $10 Liberty gold pieces. Those are the older ones, 1866 to 1907 at $675 at 800-951-0592. Uh, that is our toll-free number. That, that's what, you know, when you do business with us, right, that's what keeps us here, what's kept us in business for over 22 years. And listen, I know there's a lot of places you can go, right? You can point and click. You can drive down to the to the local coin shops and do all that stuff. I get it. I hope you end up deciding, you know what, yeah, maybe a little inconvenient, but I'm going to do business with Patriot because this is where I get my information from. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. We'll see where the Dow ends up, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Everyone have a great day.